Hello YouTube world, welcome back. Uh, my new light I got is a Galaxy Nova DVR and on the back of this, one of the features of it, it has an indexing plate which you can lock in place with 20, that's 24, 26 segments. Uh, and I was playing around with it, trying to think of a good way to make use of that and this is what I've come up with. So what I've done is I've made a bed for it have a piece of plywood, I made a small holder for a router and then I'm going to turn a bowl and I'm going to put some flutes into it. So sit tight, see how I do it. The very first thing I need to do obviously is turn my bowl. This is a piece of ash. Uh, ash is lovely wood to work with. It's quite hard, quite resilient. Uh, yet it's quite soft for turning and you get a fantastic finish off it. Brilliant, beautiful grain running through there. It is really nice. So here I'm just setting up to put a tenon on there because the left of your screen that is going to be the bottom of my bowl and now I'm just shaping the actual bowl itself. What I want to do, because I'm going to put flutes in here, they, I want them to be seen. So I'm going to make this quite a high-sided bowl, quite steep sides. Um, obviously, if it was a very shallow curve and I put flutes in it, they wouldn't be seen, uh, which is quite pointless. So we're just coming through now, just shaping the bowl. Just getting ourselves a really nice finish on there, ready for sanding. I was quite lucky with the uh, ash, there was a tree had come down, been down about five years. One of my neighbour's gardens, he said I could have it, so I had a lot of ash. Just going through now, just sanding this up, I'm using a friction sander for this. And I would say to any wood turners out there, if you haven't got one of these, go and buy one. They made such a difference to my sanding. It really is, it's, it's, I can't praise these things high enough, they are absolutely brilliant. So I'll sand that down there to 320. It's come out lovely and smooth. Some beautiful grain running through there. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some colour. I don't want to apply black, but I do want it quite dark because what I want to do in a minute when I cut these flutes in here, um, what I'll end up is uh, the land in between the flutes. From there they should be quite close together and they should get further apart as it comes up here. And what I want to do is accentuate that by painting it black and then when I put the flutes in I should have the nice white wood underneath. So I'm using Hammer Sheen Intrinsic Colour Collection Plum. And hopefully it should look pretty good. After I did this, it did look quite nice, the colour on there, but it wasn't a dark enough colour or a uniform enough colour for what I wanted. And I ended up sanding it all off and spraying it with an ebonising spray. I've sanded that back down, sanded most of it off. And I'll just give it a couple of coats of ebonising spray. Here you can see I've given that two coats of ebonising lacquer and I've shown for a small edge on there and um, what I'm going to do now is just give that a quick wipe round with this chestnut burnishing cream these two things do work extremely well together and that will put a lovely polish on there really nice polish This chestnut burnishing cream is a fine abrasive. I'll just put a polish on there. Just takes a little bit off. Clean bit of cloth, just buff that up. And you see the shine coming on there now. Uh, I've still got some abrasive on there because I'm still getting black coming off. A lovely shine on that. Get that extra bit of shine, extra bit of polish. Uh, 
I'm pleased with that. Very nice. I apologise for this. This is not best camera action, but I think you can actually see what's going on. Um, it was very difficult trying to find somewhere for the camera to sit uh, so that I could see what I was doing and uh, without the camera getting in the way but at the same time allowing you to see what was happening. That's not too bad. So what I've got is, um, is my actual bowl you can see in the lay that's locked into position. Um, I actually moved it three indexes there instead of two. I would have messed that right up if I'd have cut that. I'm doing back to start. Uh, you can see there there's a router. I've got a, a ball nose router in there. I think that's probably about three eight or something like that. Six mil. And you can also see that the there's a small router that's sat in there. And all I've done is I've made up a carriage to hold that. It was a piece of beach I turned just to fit over the nose of that rotor, cut a hole in it, uh, cut a slot knot on the bandsaw and then just put a nut and bolt through there which is just enough to pinch it up and to hold it in place. It's not a great deal of strain gets put on there. You do have to be quite careful, quite delicate cuts what you do. The other thing I've done is I've uh, just cut a piece of plywood that bolted onto the more, bed of my lathe and I just bolted it, or clamped it rather, through the bed of the lathe, the same as you would with the banjo or with your tailstock. And it just holds it in place. And I have got some T track that I've fitted into there, which allows me to make several different uh, or, or many different positions of, of how I want the carriage on there to slide so I can put in stops so I can put in um, sliding bars all sorts of stuff in there I did actually do a short video on that to show what I was doing but I'm not sure what happened to that I'd like to blame it on the gremlins but it's probably operator error no cinema graphic war awards for me this year so that's that all finished I've turned that around now I've just got to hollow it out That's all finished turned. A lovely grey pattern in there. It's beautiful. So I'm just going to sand that out. Uh, it's a lovely finish on there already. I'll sand that down to about 400 and apply some sand and sealer. So I've got that set up on my cold jewels and I'm just going to take the tenon off the bottom. A lovely strobe effect going on there. Just take this off, level the bottom up.
Uh, quick sand up. Sand and sealer. And just finish that off. Oh, there we go. Finished product. Very pleased with that. Lovely piece of ash. Fantastic rain pattern running through there. Beautiful that is. I'm just wondering if I should have put another one in between those. Whether that would have been too much. If I put just another cut in between there, I think it might have been too much. I like that black shown through. I'm glad I changed that away from the plum. Not done one of those before. Um, I made that jig probably about three years ago. Only ever used it once. Uh, once I made it, I sort of lost interest in it a little bit. But now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, already my mind's thinking about other things I could do. Um, if you turn the bowl with a quite a wide rim around there, you could castellate that right the way around. It would look quite nice. You could even put a grooves down in, which would give you like a, a curved edge on there. But I think that one as it is, very nice. I enjoyed making that one. Well, thank you all very much for watching, as usual. If you enjoyed it half as much as I enjoyed making it, we've all had a good day. And I'll see you all again next week. You take care of yourself. Bye-bye.